Okay, set your project directory. I'm going to set it to a folder called Extremes. Double click that and click OK. I'm going to go to File, Load a Scene from the Scenes folder called Extremes1.fxs. We're going to start out really simple here and learn how to set keyframes and adjust the interpolation of the frames. What we have is a box we're going to make inchworm across the grid. Let's check a few settings. First, we're going to make sure that our channel edit is set to all channels. We're going to scale along Y on the graph editor. We're going to click into the Edit tab. We're going to go to Keyframe Editing. We'll open this up. Make sure your key edit is set to all channels and your spline edit is set to all channels as well. Let's close that back down. If your spline edit is not set to all channels, you may not be able to set your attention correctly according to this lesson. We'll click into the Animate tab and let's begin. Everything has a keyframe on frame 0, so we'll just leave him where he's at. Let's advance 5 frames to frame 5. Highlight Z and just move him along Z axis. That's the first position when he inchworms forward. Let's advance 5 more frames to frame 10. And we'll move him along Z axis again. Switch to a top view. We'll tap the A key to center our selection. Let's move him along X axis and rotate him on heading so he aims in the direction of his movement. Let's advance him forward another five frames to frame 15. And if we right mouse click, we can move him in local axis coordinates. So we'll shift him along Z and right mouse click and move him along X and then rotate on heading. So he's aiming in the new direction. Let's advance 10 frames here to frame 25. And we'll right click and move him along Z axis right click down on X and heading so he moves even further on this one. Let's set the out point a little closer and we'll zoom out with the wheel mouse and see what we're going against. Each of these is called an extreme. These are the cues that the box must take in the timeline. You want him to hit certain cues while you're animating. That's what extremes are for. When we press play you can see him just skate right on through. Now we can adjust timing by clicking on the cells here in the Dope Master to determine how far a transition is between each keyframe. Let's just pause that. Sometimes it's hard to see where our timing is because of the circumstances here. In this case we have him moving along a path and it's transitioning really smoothly. If you want to see each individual keyframe you can click on them or you can click into the Edit tab. While we're in Keyframe Editing, check Scene Keys Flat. This allows you to view only the keyframes that you've laid down and no transitions between them. All the keys are set to stair step, so they hold the same position until they hit the next keyframe. So now when we press play, we can see the position and the timing. Pop, 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 pop. We can finish adjusting these on the DM to get the sense of timing. Let's go back to frame zero. When we feel the timing is good enough, we'll uncheck scene keys flat click back into the Animate tab and play around with the tension. Middle mouse click on the spline block, bring up the tension, continuity, and bias controls. And we click on each keyframe here, we can set the tension just by spinning up and down. If we set the tension to 1, what we get is an ease in, ease out set of channels. So we highlight each keyframe and set the tension to 1. If you didn't have all channel settings set properly at the beginning, it would only set the tension for the current channel, which is heading in this case. So it's setting it for all of them. So now it'll start out slow, speed up, and then slow back down before it hits the next keyframe. So it looks like it's inchworming across the grid. Now we can add even more keyframes to spruce it up a bit. Let's go to the File menu, File, and save this scene as Extremes1A.fxs.